Usually people remember something about the ticks. So they say, oh, you're that tick guy, or the tick doctor was a label that I, I received a few years ago. I love to investigate things that are not fully understood. These are things that you can't see. Um, you know, they're sort of creepy uh, little bugs that um, move relatively slowly and you don't really even see them when you're out there doing your normal recreational activities. And then, uh, you know, see these things kind of creep up on you. And uh, it's a mystery because the disease can be found in one place but not in another. We don't know exactly why that is at times. So Lyme disease is, is a bacterial infection that is carried by ticks. And so when a tick that has this infection bites a person, if it stays attached long enough, it can transmit this infection. On Lyme Borrelia in scores of patients across the southern United States, we have found three different species of Lyme Borrelia in these patients that do have signs and symptoms of Lyme disease. In fact, most of them are chronically sick people. We have found Lyme Borrelia in uh, a tick species here in the southern U.S. that is not believed by the um, established system to be capable of transmitting Lyme. And we found it in them, and we found it in individual ticks removed from human patients who tested positive for the bacteria and the tick tested positive. People will sometimes have an early flu-like illness with maybe fever and body aches and things like that. Eventually that usually goes away and the infection can then become a chronic type of infection that can then cause symptoms throughout your entire body. Uh, the, the organism can go into various tissues and organs and uh, cause symptoms related to where it can go. So it can go to the brain, it can cause cognitive problems and other neurologic issues. It can go to the heart and cause heart problems um, and so on. So it becomes this very problematic, complicated illness when it is not detected very early and treated early and it can mimic the symptoms of many different types of diseases. The technology isn't that great and when it comes to Lyme disease and other tick-borne infections the tests are nowhere near as sensitive as we would like for them to be and many people who have Lyme disease will test negative on the standard clinical diagnostic test and doctors aren't aware of that. They put too much faith in the test often and so when they get a negative test result they interpret that as meaning the infection's not there or it can't be there and they move on to other things. Things that I've done um, to exhaustion practically is trying to develop more sensitive tests. I always had a belief that Lyme was there and I had a belief that there was a lot more there than what we could see with the current test at any time. So I've spent uh, just untold hours developing and, and trying to improve these conditions by which we look for DNA of the organism. Uh, one of the standard microbiological techniques is always to grow a bacteria, to get a pure culture of it. Lyme Borrelia are notoriously difficult to grow. So we find that the sensitivity of the DNA type tests are much greater. Um, so I hope that it, that it does initiate some new research. But um, I also hope it eventually leads to an understanding of the limitations of our current diagnostic testing. And that as we identify more species of Lyme Borrelia in human patients in, the North, uh, in, the, in the North America, that the, the uh, laboratory tests will be modified to include the ability to detect these other species and strains. And I think what we're going to find when we do that is that Lyme disease is a whole lot more common than we want it to be, uh, but we need to know the truth.